I call it the tyranny of secrecy. And this is how the uh, shadow government uses secrecy to circumvent the U.S. Constitution and control Congress and the president and the judiciary. This is how they do it. I call it the tyranny of secrecy. You remember this? John F. Kennedy, perhaps the first whistleblower, maybe. I don't know what you call him that. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. I cannot agree with that more, having seen what I've seen. And, the very, and, and he goes on, and there is a very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment, which is what we are seeing today, living. And he said this, I will splinter the CIA into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the winds because they lied to him, provided false information, the Bay of Pigs operation and others, things he was not told about. Uh, he and Bobby had access to mafia files where the CIA was working directly with the mafia and they were about to bust, he and Bobby were about to bust the CIA's connection to the mafia. And the CIA was not very happy with him. Alan Dulles was the director at the time uh, that Kennedy was doing these things, made this threat. Kennedy was assassinated, and they put Alan Dulles in charge of the Warren Commission investigation of the assassination, putting the fo fox in charge of the hen house. Where did this all start in terms of government power of secrecy? We have people from the Waycross area. The state secrets privilege, remember I mentioned that? Go complete impunity to shut down any case against the shadow government, CIA, NSA, started here. Waycross, Georgia, not too far from here. Uh, and there is the actual site with this, with it, where this occurred, and I always encourage people to visit it because it's very, it's very heart-wrenching to go there. An Air Force B-29 1948 bomber crashed in Waycross, Georgia. The widows, there were, there were four RCA engineers on board that were killed in the crash that drove the plane right into a farm, nose first into the ground. Huge, huge super fortress bomber. Uh, the RCA, RCA engineers were killed. Their widows went to the Air Force, as any widow would, and demanded to, to know how their, how their husbands died, what killed them, and how did my husband die? Well, the Air Force told them the usual excuse, well, we can't tell you how your husbands died because it's classified. Now, whenever you hear this from now on, when the government says it can't tell you because it's classified, be suspicious. Well, we can't tell you that uh, because uh, the details are of the clash, crash are classified. So the widows filed suit in court for the crash report. Okay, if, if it's classified, then we want to see the crash report proved to us that this was, a, this was a result of a classified operation. So what the government did with impunity was this. They created the state secrets privilege, created it out of thin air, and the judiciary approved it. So using the state secrets privilege, they shut the widow's case down, sealed all the evidence in court, even from Congress, where it's sealed forever and can never be seen again. And that is where the state secrets privilege was created. Turns out, Judith Piatha uh, uh, Paya Lothar, or Judith Lothar Paya, I'm sorry, uh, was the daughter of one of the RCA engineers killed in the crash. I interviewed, she's in my book. It's a, it's a pretty stirring interview. She was denied uh, uh, information as to how her dad was killed in, in the accident, and she says herself how heartbroken she was that her own government would do this to her. And uh, she gave me an interview, and it was, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty concerning, heartbreaking. So Judith went out and did some searching, and she found what a heroine, hero, heroine, however you want to put it, she found the crash report on the internet, and it was unclassified completely. Just, she found, there it was. Uh, the, the, the Air Force had mistakenly put the crash report out on the internet, and there it is. Uh, it was, uh, I'll show it to you. And it, there it is. There's the actual crash report from the internet. Nothing in this document is classified at all. As a matter of fact, it shows gross negligence. Where the pilots overcompensated, an engine went out, they overcompensated. Uh, I think they'd only, they had four days of training before they got on the mission to fly, overcompensated and drove that super fortress right into the ground and killed these guys. Com gross negligence. There was nothing classified at all about that, and yet they created the state's secrets privilege to shut it down, and this case is still sealed to this day, despite this knowledge. It's incredible. There's uh, Judy's mom, uh, whose, whose husband was killed in the crash, picture of her. So, the point here, with this single thing, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend you go and look at the plaque in Waycross, Georgia. Uh, Judy made a beautiful plaque, and she gets into how the, the state secrets privilege was created and how tyrannical it is, beautifully worded thing. I recommend you go there. It's the actual site where government secrecy began in terms of, of its tyrannical uh, version. The most tyrannical power of the U.S. government is based on a lie, something that didn't happen and something that was not classified. 
And now the CIA and the NSA use this to shut down cases against their unconstitutional activity with impunity. Incredible. You can't sue the NSA for spying on you now because of the state secrets privilege, which, which was created based on a lie and the death of three innocent people uh, involving, also involving their widows. All right, so the shadow government controls Congress, manipulates congressional hearings. We've seen a lot of that. It withholds, withholds clearances from congressmen and senators. We want to know what's going on in Syria and, and, and uh, how you're arming the Free Syrian Army. Well, Congressman Fred Mertz, uh, sorry, but you just don't have the, the clearances to have access to that information. Uh, and if you try to get that information, it's a violation of national security. And you, at the very least, you'll, be, you'll lose your seat in Congress, so I wouldn't go there. That's one way they do it. They classify documents to conceal illegal activity. If you want to conceal it, you classify it. They classified things in my book, uh, illnesses. Uh, my my uh, family and son were poisoned. There were doctors' diagnosis of that, of that toxic exposure, and they classified it. It's not classified about that at all. Now, it's illegal for them to do that based on executive order, but they don't care. So they'll classify it to conceal it from Congress. Classified bu budget information, they classify all the information necessary to, to uh, rule the CI. Classified, Congress has no access to it. Block congressional scrutiny using the state secrets privilege. They actually control the White House. They blindfold the president. Uh, he is not aware of some of these operations. And some presidents in the past have not wanted to be aware <laughs> of these operations. But a lot of the things that the CIA does, they don't tell the president they're doing them. Been there. They don't tell them or Congress that they're doing it. Major constitutional problem, but that's what they do because they've got the power to do it. They manipulate the president. Remember false intelligence given to George W. Bush uh, caused him to make the decision to go to war in Iraq based on false intelligence manipulated by the CIA and given to a president caused one of the worst wars in our, in our history and destabilized the entire Middle East. They can influence a president's re-election. They can put so much president, remember, remember uh, Senator Schumer's statement? They can put so much pressure on a president that they can prevent him or her from being reelected based on how they work uh, things around the president, the Congress, the cabinet, and other things. Uh, Donald Trump right now is surrounded by shadow government operatives, and it's really concerning. There are members of his cabinet that are starting to manipulate him in ways that are concerning a lot of us. A lot of Federal Reserve Goldman Sachs people are being appointed to high-level positions. Uh, it's getting kind of scary. It, it's up to, you know, you got you to play carefully. Uh, that's one of the reasons they want to get rid of them, but, you know, they're having an effect. Control the judiciary, the, the secret Supreme Court uh, on behalf of the NSA and, of course, the state secret privilege. So the shadow government, the point of this slide is the shadow government controls all three branches of our government. Who's running the show? They are. And it's a complex system they've been developing for over 60 years. So if you want to conceal some illegal activity, if you want to conceal the fact that uh, my family was poisoned and almost died, and when I filed all the evidence, it was all blacked out, you just classify it because you got the power. So if you want to conceal it, classify it. Congress goes to the CIA and they say, we demand that you give us all the information on the torture program. We demand it. We, we have authority over you, CIA. Of course, the CIA is like, yeah, right. But you give us that information. Well, then they destroy the torture tapes and they claimed, well, uh, we lost them. That's what they told them. We can't find them. We lost them after they destroyed them. So they said, all right, give us the documents. So finally the CIA said, okay, well, we always like to comply. So this is what they gave them. <laughs> that's what they give the Congress. You can't read a thing that's in there. We've complied now. We're not giving you anything else, they said. All right, so we had the NSA surveillance program after, the domestic, after Snowden blew the domestic surveillance program. Congress went and said, okay, NSA, we demand you give us the information on the NSA surveillance program. We're Congress. We're your bosses. You give that to us. And after some resistance, one invocation of the state secrets privilege, they finally said, okay, we'll comply. And this is what they gave them. Can you read anything in this document? No. And they, they actually can have the power to stand on this. So Congress can do nothing about it. They have to, this is what they received. They have no idea what they're doing. Legally, there's nothing they can do to get this information. All right, so let's go on. Fast and furious, you ran guns across the border into Mexico, which were used to kill civilians and at least one federal agent. We demand that you give us information on fast and furious. We're the Congress. Okay, we'll give, you, we'll give it to you. And there it is. That's the fast and furious document given to Daryl Issa when he was running the committee. Well, let's go on. 9-11, the most horrible event in US history, maybe the world happened. They demanded the people did the 9-11 report um, because we all wanted to know what really happened on that day. So. 
They gave it to them except for 28 pages, and there's the 28 pages. Hey, they complied. Uh, those 28 pages are still blacked out. A couple of congressmen have come out and said, look, I can't tell you exactly what's in there because they'll go to jail, but I can tell you it probably involves Saudi Arabia's in intelligence. And you can extrapolate that on to our connection with them, and all you, I don't know how you can go. But that's what they got. That's how they do it. That's how the shadow government works. They actually control Congress by doing this, and no one can stop them. That's the chilling thing. No one can stop them from doing this. That's how the shadow government operates. That's its power. Now, in my case, <clears throat> I found an assassination vulnerability within the CIA uh, where foreign agents at, at just about any one of our, our embassies could identify our covert agents, their identity, and, and assassinate them potentially. Um, that's an investigation I did. I was threatened to drop it. My investigation was destroyed three times. It was destroyed from the headquarters server in the agency, and my th career was threatened to drop the investigation. More on that later. Why, why in the world would they do such a thing? So uh, I was put on a base managed by the CIA officer who was rebuked by the Intelligence Committee for doing that, became my boss on a base where my family was, became gravely ill. They were poisoned badly. So my son almost died. So, so did my wife. So I fought them. <clears throat> I gathered all the evidence. I sent it to the Congressional Oversight Committees. I sent it to Washington. I sent it, sent it to the CIA. And what they did in return was they put me under a gag order. They issued a gag order. My attorneys told me uh, the evidence in your case is so strong that they can't drop your case. Uh, and they're concerned about what they're going to do. So they put me under a gag order. I couldn't talk to anybody about my family being poisoned or being sick, my house being broken into. Uh, we were bugged. We were followed um, because they didn't want this getting out that this has happened. So they put me on a gag order, and they, re they refused to let me see the gag order for two years. They told me it's too sensitive. Well, then what am I gagged by? Well, we can't tell you. It's too sensitive for even you to see what you're gagged by. We fought this for two years. After two years, remember the examples I just gave you? Okay, all right, we'll give you, we'll give you the, the gag order. And this is what it looked like. Do I still know what I'm gagged by? Uh, no. You know what you would call this? Um, oh, and, and, and they, they sealed my case. Sealed it so not even Congressman Frank Wolf, my Congress, could have access to all of the evidence and information. Sealed it permanently. State secrets privilege. Sealed it so no one could ever have access again. A family being poisoned, followed, house broken into. Mountains of evidence. Uh, case of entrapment. What they were trying to do was get me to say something that violated the gag order. I didn't even know what I was gagged by, a.k.a. like John Caracal, and then, then take me out of the picture because I was starting to blow the whistle. See how corrupt this stuff gets? Uh, it's that bad. It's actually worse. So what was my defining moment? I was a decorated CIA officer. The CIA was my life. I had awards, medals, uh, uh, I traveled overseas, I did a lot of things um, you know, that some, sometimes, some guys dream about. I mean, I loved the agency. Until I, the higher I got up in the ranks, the more I started seeing how corrupt this beast was. And then you, gotta, you have a decision to make. Why would the CIA cover up the assassination vulnerability of its agents overseas? Why would the CIA not want to protect their, their agents in foreign countries from being killed? Why would they cover that up? Why would they threaten me and destroy the documents and then target me later on this base and my family is exposed to poisons? Why? The, uh, the people are still asking that today. Why would they do that? Unless there, maybe there's some people out there that if they want to take out a, a CIA officer or a chief of station that they, they don't like, well, there's a way that they can do that, perhaps. It's the only theory that I've heard that is a possibility. But, that, but they did that. Uh, I was threatened. Documents that I wrote, I had a 15-page investigation, all detailed, right down to the IP address level, right down to every, every way you could get in and identify our agents and their assets, if you can imagine. All the documents were destroyed. So I had a decision to make. Um, and just personally, after a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, I decided I could, I could not let my fellow officers' safety be at such extensive risk out there. I mean, what, how can you do that? So uh, by, by simple prov providence, I came across a senior official outside the CIA uh, who found out about my investigation. I got a call on the secure line one day. Uh, Kevin, this is Jim so-and-so. I read your investigation. Uh, I want you over at Maine State, seventh floor immediately. I'm like, sure, okay. So I went over there and he said, we read your stuff and uh, we think you're onto something here. 
do not tell your bosses or the CIA anything about this. We're going to go out, we're going to do a global investigation, take a few months. You'll probably get a call from us in a few months, you just lay low. So I went outside the CIA to a senior decorated government official, God and Patriot type, one of the, one of the, the good types, awesome guy. Uh, three months later, I get a, a call on the secure line. And the funny part is I just talked to my, a good friend of mine on the secure line. And we were talking. He goes, listen, I've got to go. Someone's coming in my office. I said, I said, okay, so I'll call you back in five minutes. So I hung up the phone. Five minutes later, the phone rings. And I think it's my friend. So I pick it up and I said, Pizza Hut. And it was Jim C. He's like, Gavin, this is Jim C. over at Main State. I was like, another Homer Simpson. Oh, uh, sorry, sir. I thought you were my buddy. But anyway, he goes, come over here immediately. So I went over and they sat me down and they pulled out their investigation. They said it's worse than even you thought. The foreign nationals, foreign intelligence officers, assassins, whatever, can go into just about any embassy in the world, identify our covert agents, and once they identify them, then they're basically theirs. Huge, massive vulnerability that your agency covered up. We're going to have a meeting in three days. The agency has ordered to be, to be, to be there. Will you come also? Well, yes, sir, of course. So I went to this big meeting, a big conference room, top level of state, three senior state officers, the CIA officer in charge of the cover-up sitting at one end, two of the state guys at the other end, Jim so-and-so here, and me across the table. The Department of State officially proceed, proceeds to rebuke, officially rebuke the CIA for putting the lives of its agents at risk overseas for over 10 years, told them they should be ashamed of themselves, and they were going to publish these findings and what the CIA did to the entire intelligence community, which they did. So the entire intelligence community knew what the CIA did. Me? <laughs> I got a laser dog. <laughs> you know, this is my boss sitting at the end of the table who wound up becoming the chief of the base where we were poisoned. What a coincidence. Mm -hmm. That's how that played out. It was a serious vulnerability. He was placed in charge. I had a laser dot on my back. Even an FBI agent I was working with on this base, good one too, we were doing an investigation. She took me aside, said, close the door. I said, yeah. She goes, uh, you're being set up. And I said, uh, you think so? She goes, oh, yeah. No, you're being set up by your own agency. I just, you know, you're just be, being nice to me, just what she'd seen. And uh, I was. Um, so even the FBI was seeing it. Um, so what was my defining moment? My family was seriously ill from toxic exposure. The, the house is infested with this black mold. We found a, a uh, mustard gas shell percolating up out of the yard. Um, they had broken into the house and painted a chemical on the ceiling. It was like three days of the condor. It was just... Uh, th there was a toxin in there that was a neurotoxin that was deadly. Uh, I documented evidence, doctor's diagnosis. I took my own secret samples of the house, got them processed from an outside entity. I got a full report from that entity saying the house was contaminated. The CIA took control of that document and blacked it out. And, and the, uh, the guy that produced that document, uh, I think it was six months later, was shot in the head. Coincidence? Uh, the cops never solved, solved the case. And they said it was probably unrelated, was the quote. Um, so who knows? Um, who knows? House is broken into. They painted a chemical on the ceiling. We were bugged. We were followed. The security guards who become friends of mine gave me affidavits that they were ordered to destroy any information on the house. They were ordered to destroy the, the, the records of the break into the house and everything else. They were ordered to, to destroy by the heads of the base. And they were, they were good folks. They signed those affidavits for our, for our court case. That's one of the ways we got them all the way to court. Then they came to me and they said, uh, you know that settlement that we made with you? We're not going to abide by it. Matter of fact, we're going to give you a fraction of that. And if you don't take that, we're going to invoke, invoke the state secrets privilege and we're going to shut down all the information of, of the case and evidence of your family being poisoned. And no one will ever see it again. We got you. what they said. Um, <laughs> Like the FBI agent told me the last conversation we had, she said, well, I guess they messed with the wrong man this time. Because I said, oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. I'm, I'll take this. I'm taking this all the way. You know, you want to lock me up? I mean, my, my sweetheart wife back there experienced this. Go ahead. And for a couple of months, I stood there just waiting for them to come. Because I had written a book called From the Company to Shadows, and I put a code in there that exposed that they, the family was poisoned and it was covered up by the state secrets privilege illegally. A gross violation of law and the Constitution. Uh, Congressman Frank Wolf, tremendous guy, uh, tried to get evidence of our case seven times and the agency just blew him off and said, sorry, you got no access to this. You have got no right to even ever access this. Sorry, N it never saw it. A good man, he, he really tried. Uh, so I witnessed at several levels the CIA's unbridled use of secrecy. I mean, you know, I was a decorated officer. 
I was a loyalist, and I started, every time I thought they wouldn't do something, they did it. Every time I thought they wouldn't abuse this privilege any further, they did, uh, to a gross extent, to the extent that our agents' lives were at risk in the field, and, and with impunity they were doing this. So I, I made the decision to fight, and I have to tell you, uh, just me personally, uh, I believe in a higher authority, and, and uh, that's, that's kind of what uh, empowered me to stand uh, I'm answerable to a high authority and where my faith is, and uh, I'm not afraid of the CIA. I'm not, you know, my uh, soul is not in their hands. Let's put it that way. And that's, that's what enabled me to have the strength and the courage to, to stand up, and that's why I did. And for the sake of my family, I couldn't let them do that. Just couldn't do it. I, ha I had to keep going. So I wrote a book, and they blacked the whole, they, they, it's amazing. They let me publish things. They put me right next to an assassin in the field, uh, a well-known international assassin, they put me right next to him and then left me hanging out in the open without even putting me under any sort of protection, maybe hoping the guy would take me. I don't know, but we went, we went to dinner a lot, and the guy started liking me. I, I actually got this in the book, and he's, he started, we started becoming friends. So I sent some stuff back to headquarters saying, hey, so-and-so is like, you know, he's here. He's, I'm standing there teaching how to shoot firearms, except for the fact that the guy was so good. I was like, my gosh, you just hit a bottle at 80 yards with a Glock. Who are you? But apparently the guy liked me, so he didn't kill me. And headquarters came back and said, that's an international assassin. What are you doing next to him? I said, you put me next to him, you morons. So you, you just drop it anyway. Uh, things like that begin to happen. Um, so, but that I got in the book. The vulnerability to our agents and the ability to find out their identities, I got in the book from the company that shadows. But they blacked out the fact that my family was poisoned. Simple doctor's diagnosis and environmental studies, blacked out. It's a violation of Executive Order 1233, I think it is. Reagan issued it with the CIA cannot black out information if it's simply embarrassing to the agency or reveals illegal activity. They did it with impunity. I think they're going to get away with it. Um, I don't think they did. So I came out in public, and now this is why I do what I do. And since the, I have people coming up to me now, whistleblowers, I'm friends with William Binney, uh, John Kiriakow, who they put in prison for two years for making a mistake. Kirk Weeby, whose house is raided by the FBI for the NSA Domestic Surveillance Program. Um, there are heroes out there uh, that believe in the Constitution above their own personal safety. And there are more are coming, God willing. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get even more than that. Why is no one speaking out? If, if we're seeing these things, and I, and I know people who are, why is no one speaking out about these gross violations? Why are there no whistleblowers? This is the, the first reason Dane asked me to come and speak, because this is my, this is my specialty. Uh, why is no one blowing the whistle on these things? I just showed you all the felonies that the federal government, specifically the central node, the CIS committee. Why is no one being held accountable? Why is no one blowing the whistle? There is a perfected, exact, refined process that the shadow government uses to secretly silence and destroy whistleblowers. And it works really well. I'll show you exactly how they do it. How, how do I know what I'm talking about? Let me just stop here a little bit and, and say this. Um, I have no ego. I'm married. I tried that. My wife will slap me down. <laughs> so uh, I put some things in my book, not to make myself look like a tough guy, but to prove who I was. The first thing they tried to do is tell me I could never tell anybody I worked for the CIA until I provided documents where they, they could, just couldn't refute that. Uh, then they, they issued threats about what I could and could not say. Um, so uh, I put some things in my book to prove who I am. And I think that's important because there's a lot of frauds out there and you gotta be careful. I was a branch manager in the CIA. I was an internal counterintelligence investigator. I was an internal staff security investigator. I was a polygraph examiner. I engaged and got an award for overseas counterterrorism operations. And I was a program manager in the military industrial complex for a very large defense contractor. That is my background. So. Uh, I stood against, I guess for a total of 12 years, I stood against the CI and against their abuse of secrecy. And we didn't know, uh, Sue and I didn't know if I was going to be taken away any day. I mean, we lived with that, she and I together, for a good five years. Um, so I put evidence. I actually filed a Freedom of Information Act request to the CI requesting my performance evaluations for my time on the director's staff as his agent, for my time as a counterintelligence investigator, and for my time as a counterterrorism center op operations officer. So after six months of fighting, they're supposed to have it back in 30 days. After six months of fighting, I got it back. I got my actual proof of who I was, and I put it in from the Company of Shadows. And by the time I got it, there was nothing they could do because they issued it by Freedom of Information. And the reason I did that was to prove uh, uh, who I am. 
or who I was or who I'm recovering from. <laughs> so no one can come and say that he's just blowing smoke. And I did that because I knew that's exactly what they were going to do. Okay, where are the whistleblowers? Remember I mentioned, as we get uh, ready to close, remember I mentioned that the government binds everybody with a secrecy oath, a secrecy agreement. Remember that? I know, because I was one of the guys that executed those uh, four people, on people. Um, in that secrecy agreement, you are bound by ever talking about anything you've ever had access to that's classified, period, anything. You mention that, you leak that, uh, you face administrative action, termination, prison, in some cases, even worse. Do you think anybody's going to take that risk, uh, your average person? No, most don't. Some, some do. Some go past that. There's a massive complex system of secrecy and concealment. This massive shadow government has got a complex system all arrayed against that one man or woman who has the nerve to come out and expose this uh, dark operation. The whole thing is arrayed against that person. I mentioned uh, when we signed up for the intelligence community uh, with an intelligence job, we waived our right to constitutional trial. We didn't even know it. Nobody knows it. They don't tell us that when we sign up. I know because I tried that personally and they told me, you got no right to trial. That's how I found that out. You have no right to trial. If you, if you are an employee of the CIA or NSA, you have waived your right to a constitutional jury trial no matter what happens to you. There is a sequential perfected system to silence and destroy whistleblowers. Now remember, Congress issued the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act. You remember that? We're going to protect whistleblowers. Remember the old Ron Paul thing? Okay, they're doing reform. Watch them. They issued the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act. We're going to protect these whistleblowers. So you're protected now, so if you see anything illegal, come talk to us. Only problem, if you read down in the 2012 Whistleblower Protection Act, it's out there on the net, it says that any employee that has any access to any government classified information at any level is exempt from this act. That's what it says, right in there. So you've got to read down to about the last fourth of the act, and there it is. In other words, you ain't got no protection if you're with the CIA and the NSA. You're, I mean, you're essentially toast. And they prosecuted uh, several people. Kira Cow, they raided uh, uh, William Binney's house, put him at gunpoint, was in the shower. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, and and just, just grossly abused. There, is no, there was no protection. So Barack Obama in 2014 issued the Whistleblower Enhancement Protection Act because a lot of people staged an outcry over John Kira Cow's arrest and other things. They said, wait a minute, what, this, how can you do this? This is censorship at its worst, government corruption at its worst. So Barack Obama issued the 2014 Whistleblower Enhancement Protection Act. So members of the NSA and CIA are protected now, right? Wrong. What do you think? In the act, it says, an employee of an intelligence agency can only report that illegal activity if they're currently occupying that position in that agency at the time. Just think about that for a second. I'm going to report that the CIA just killed five people in Afghanistan by assassinating them, shooting them in the head. But I can only report that if I'm sitting under the boss in charge of that operation. What do you think is going to happen to me? It ain't going to work. And I'll, that puts the person intentionally under the internal system of personal destruction because they have to be right there where they can get them if they're going to report this stuff. Can you see it? And, and I'll show you how they do that. Sadly, just in this general uh, context here, the news media is compliant. Probably one of the most heartbreaking things is uh, the news media is compliant with this whole system. Uh, whistleblower goes to the, the news media. Most of them are going to let the CIA or the NSA know that they did that. So uh, freedom of the press is uh, no longer. If they've got the guts to proceed over the evidence, then they'll just invoke the state secret privilege and shut the case down and seal it forever. So not even Congress has access. They have that power to do that. I've seen them do it. This is how they do it. They appoint, uh, and this is the system. I want, I want everybody to see the system. I want the system out there in public. So when they pull this, everybody knows what they're doing, what this complex system is, and they can recognize it when it happens. If someone is inside an agency and they see some really black program happen that is illegal and unconstitutional or human rights violation, I want them to know what they're going to try to do to you if you uh, try to report this. And perhaps there's ways you can somehow constitutionally get that to people who need to know. Supervisors who comply are appointed. I was a supervisor, a branch chief. First thing they did was they took me in the office and they said, sit down. We want you to, two of your employees, we want you to rate them down on their performance appraisals because we just want them to know who's in charge and that they need to comply with us. And I said, well, sir, 
they're both high performers. I couldn't ask for a better employee. They said, no, we're ordering you to do that. And if you don't do that, if you don't comply with us, we're going to put a memo in your file that's going to stay with you the rest of your career. You know what they were doing? They were vetting me. What do you think I did? I answered to a higher authority. Uh, I came back the next day and I said, uh, I rated them both high on their performance appraisals. That's what they deserved. They're good employees. I went and I sat down and I said, I rated them what they deserve. You know, make my day. So they put a letter in my file. I said, fine, do what you want to do. A year later, both of those guys are removed from their positions for corruption. But anyway, uh, that's how they do it. Um, the supervisor will take you in, take the employee in and say, you know, Jane or Fred, I know you're concerned about this incident in Syria, but you know, there have been other employees who've kind of reported that same kind of thing. And, and uh, well, you saw what happened to them. You know, they lost their career. and Sadly, they were fired. And, you know, we don't want that to happen to you. So just be careful. Everybody knows what that means. Do it, and you're, and you're gone. If they, if they proceed, they're they start being de denied promotions that they, they are qualified for. They're put away in embarrassing assignments, which is a message to them and all of their coworkers. See what happens if you rock the boat? This is their, this is their method of operation. This is how they do it. Uh, any reporting documents, that, any evidence that they have, remember the assassination vulnerability, is lost or destroyed. Oh, we can't find it. We don't know where that went. Well, it's not on the headquarters server anymore. We don't know what happened. That's what they'll do. Let's say the employee files a grievance, an internal grievance system with the IG, the investigations group that every agency has. Only problem is IG members, at least uh, with intelligence agencies, are career members of that agency. I had someone come out that was a high-level IG member and tell me that when my case hit, they were so freaked out it was going to hit the press and they're going to find out what they were doing. The IG itself tried to silence me. The group that's supposed to, that I filed a grievance with that was lost from the system, was supposed to assist me, was, became, uh, I was targeted by the very group that was supposed to represent me. That's how they do it. It's part of the system. And the evidence that I had, and I had to go any, any much further on this, I had a full documented report of the poisoning, the doctor's diagnosis, the environmental tests I had. I sent it through official channels to headquarters, called, and they said they never got it. So having the access, I went into headquarters, I went down into the internal cable system, and I talked to Doug, last name not to be known. And I said, Doug, I've, I sent this uh, internal uh, investigation file, and they say they haven't received it. You, and this is all through the in, in, internal channels. Very controlled system. Doug went in there. I was sitting right next to him. He goes, uh, I don't believe this. I said, what do you mean you don't believe what? He goes, it's gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? It's, it's officially tracked document. He goes, no, it's disappeared from the system. He said, I've never seen this before. I said, well, Doug, you, this has never happened. He goes, this doesn't happen. This is an official system. These documents are all tracked. This one is gone. I said, well, can we get it back? And he goes, no, man, it's gone forever. I don't know what the heck happened here. I left there, and I'm like, ooh, man, the fun has started. So let's say the employee files a legal suit. Now, this is in Chapter 25 of the book, I think, Tyranny of Secrecy. Let's say the employee files a legal suit against the CIA or the NSA. And this is where it gets fun. They let me publish this in the book, too, how they do it. They just wouldn't let me publish who they did it to. This is how they do it. You file a suit against, uh, let's say, the CIA. The CIA will block any outside attorneys and only let you use an attorney approved by them on their list. Kangaroo court already? Maybe? It gets worse than that, man. The, the CIA demands all of the evidence that your attorneys have or you have. They demand you have to provide it to the CIA or you've committed a national security violation. Even, even notes with your attorneys that are taken in their office have got to be turned over to the CIA and controlled in CIA locked safes, then classified by the CIA, even though that it's your evidence and your attorney's notes. That's what they do. Otherwise, you've committed a national security violation. Then they hold and control all documents, everything, control of the case. My attorneys tried to get, they had documents. Uh, they demanded the CIA give them a safe. They were never provided that. So all of my attorney's uh, documents and evidence, the evidence of my report, reports, were forcefully kept uh, in a safe inside CIA headquarters where we never saw them again, never saw the light of day. They classify all unclassified information. The outside environmental report I secretly had done was blacked out. The guy was shot in the head. Who knows where that, I'm not going to go there right now. They took that document classified it, blacked it out, and retained it in, in headquarters so no one could see it. It was now a controlled document. So they classify unclassified information. 
they intentionally dragged the case out for years. They got a staff of 10 CIA attorneys that are getting paid eight hours a day no matter what they do, and you. So they can stretch, and they do. They'll stretch that case out for eight to 10 years while you pay your attorney by the hour and drain you financially. About halfway through the process, if you last that long, you're bankrupt. And they know that. Their attorneys get paid a salary every day for four years. They got, they got nothing to lose, no problem. And if your case is strong and you got them, the judge told my attorneys, uh, I think Mr. Ship has them over a barrel. See, I was them. I caught them with a break-in. I had tapes of them breaking in. I had, I had affidavits from the guards of them destroying documents. Man, I had the whole, I was two steps ahead of them every single time they pulled this because I was trained by them. I was two steps ahead and we had them. We had them. Um, so all they have to do is invoke the state secrets privilege and then they can take all the hard evidence and seal it and it's over. It's gone. Not even congressmen and your senators have access to it. And if you talk about your case, this, the poisoning or anything else, if you talk about your case to anyone, you can go to prison for violating that. Or in my case, my wife and kids, my 70-year-old uh, son could go to prison for talking about the fact that he almost died because he was poisoned. You can imagine that. Now, kind of a defining moment for a dad, huh? Uh, excuse me, <laughs> you, just, you just don't do that in America, man. You just don't. Uh, they blocked their congressman. They, thre they threatened everybody with prison. Most people stop right there. You're drained, destroyed, you're shot. Usually, and they know this, that's, that's how they've developed this system. You're done, you're bankrupt, you're worn out. People get PTSD, they, 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 everything just falls apart. Most people stop right here. If you are an exception to the rule, and you keep going, they search your travel records, your credit cards, uh, anything that they can find against you, that they can use against you if, if, if they have to go that far. Um, try to find any mistake you've made in your 17, 18, 19, 20 year career. When you travel with the CIA and you're out in some foreign country and you're throwing money around, if they want to find something, they, they'll find it. But that's what they'll do next. Uh, in my case, I was ordered uh, to evacuate, finally evacuate this base. We, 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 uh, they destroyed all of our personal property. Everything in that house, everything we owned was destroyed because it was contaminated. We lost everything. Baby pictures included. Everything. Kids lost all their toys. Everything was destroyed. That part was blacked out in the book, of course. Um, but that's what they did. And, th and then they ordered me to use the government credit card when we evacuated from the house. So as we're traveling, I get a call from a company called ServPro. I'm not down in ServPro, but this particular office, my wife had some uh, priceless heirlooms from her grandma, a table and a buffet and things that were, that were, uh, uh, they were priceless. They were heirlooms. And those are the one things that we had this decontamination company decontaminating because, you know, they're my wife's heirlooms. So I get a call. They say, you pay us the full amount for this decontamination by tomorrow or we're, gonna, we're putting all your wife's stuff out at the curb and pe people can just take it as they will. I said, well, you've, got, you've got tomorrow by 9 o'clock. So I took the credit card and I charged for the decontamination of the stuff that they contaminated my wife's property. They turned around and said, you've abused the government credit card. We're going to get you on that. And I said, no, back up a little bit. You ordered me for, to use that card for the, for the evacuation. You contaminated this stuff. You want to keep fighting, we'll do this. But that's what they tried to do. It's exactly the same procedure. Is what they tried on me. It didn't work. Uh, I have seen this happen many times. I was a counterintelligence investigator. We had cases of internal employees. Many of them had not done a thing. They had blown, uh, well, like, there was some indication where they were reacting some, to some things. And, and I was, one of my strong points was getting them through and finding out it was nothing. But we had some big cases. One of mine went to the president. But, Generally speaking, your average employee are under such stress because they're under investigation in the counterintelligence center. The next step is, well, you know, you're under a lot of stress. You're not sleeping at night. So we recommend you go down to the Office of Medical Services and they'll help you cope with your stress so you can sleep at night. If the employee doesn't know better, they're like, okay. So they march down there and they sit in there with this CIA uh, psychiatrist, many of which were involved in MK Ultra kinds of things. So you're not really dealing with an up above board person and they sit them down and they talk to them about their stress and how to handle it and they're writing down uh, disgruntled, paranoid, um, insubordination and, and then they put that in the file and if it ever does see the light of day, if it ever does do it, go to court, what do you think they pull out? Well, we did an analysis of Joe Schmo and they're disgruntled, they're paranoid. I know because I sent some people there 
And, and now they think they got the documentation, unless people know they do this. Now, now people know they do this. So if they try to pull it, uh, judge or, or, or investigators, now you know you better check and make sure whether this document is legitimate or not. Then what they'll do, I think they did this in, uh, may have done this in uh, Kirk Wiebe's case or, or Thomas Drake. They accuse you of security violations. Uh, you've committed a security violation. They raided Thomas Drake's house because he went and revealed uh, Trailblazer, the NSA domestic surveillance program, nothing classified. Uh, they raided his house. They raided Bill Binney's house. He opened the shower and the FBI had a gun to his head. He committed no crime. So they'll accuse them of a trumped up security violation, which uh, brands them as a security threat. And then they can harass them and surveil them in their own mind. They're, they're now legally can break into their house and surveil them. That's how they do it. That's the system. They've been, they've been utilizing this. There have been thousands of lives that have been destroyed by this system. Thousands of lives. Not just in the CIA and the NSA, but also in the military. Some of you out the military know what I'm talking about because it's happened to you. I've spoken to many of you. Uh, this is the system that they use. It's a refined system of entrapment. They do it because it works on most people. What they do strategically then is they begin to destroy the employee financially. If they can't get you, this is how wicked they are. If they can't get you, they'll go for your family. Like the mafia, of course, they've been connected with the mafia. They know those techniques. If they can't get you, they will go to the thing that you love the most, won't they? They'll go to your wife and your kids. They will. And they'll try to destroy you financially. They'll drag you out with, uh, with large legal bills. Um, in my case, they raised all the interest rates on my personal loans within that agency's credit union so they were unaffordable. And when I went in and I demanded to, to see who did it, the uh, head of, the, of this credit union didn't know what they were doing. And he said, my gosh, I've never seen this before. This looks like some kind of retribution. I have him on tape. <laughs> and uh, then they got to him and I called back and he goes, oh, well, I don't know anything about it. I can't talk now. And then the person who wrote the loan disappeared. She doesn't work here anymore. Raised all the interest rates. Then they blocked my retirement funds. I went to OPM and OPM said, well, we've been ordered by your agency not to give you your retirement funds. That's a felony. That is a flat out felony. So I called the OPM and I said, uh, Mrs. So-and-so at the OPM, do you realize that you're committing a felony by withholding my retirement funds so my family can survive? She's like, I said, no, go, check, go check the regulations. I had my retirement fund in one week. <laughs> I have them on tape, the agency on tape, saying that's why they did it. And this is my evidence building. That's what they'll do. They'll go that far so that your family will not have uh, enough money to survive. They will destroy your family if they have to to shut you up. Again, this is a shadow government. It goes all the way back, blood on the roots, blood on the fruit. They'll drive the employee and their family into financial ruin. Most times the employee is done and they retreat, they're broken, they're sick, they're bankrupt, and it's over for them. And they know that. The psychiatrists know that. They, they're they're well-versed uh, and educated and they've used this multiple times. They know usually it works. The person is broken. Some, I've seen a case like that. This, the, the employee was so devastated, they went out in the woods and killed themselves. And uh, what, what do you have there? Strategy of silence is complete. They've committed the ultimate crime. The person's dead. No more problem for the agency anymore. It's done. Shattered, ruined. Remember this case? They've committed the perfect crime. Remember Gary Webb, who exposed the CIA's drug running down in South America? Gary Webb, uh, they, got, they got to his editors at the press who fired him from his investigation, ordered him to stop it, put him on, on an embarrassing assignment, uh, I think out in Las Vegas or something like that, and then Gary was found in a hotel room with, with two bullets in the head, an alleged suicide. I don't know how you shoot yourself twice in the head, to keep it, but anyway, uh, no more investigation into CIA drug running in Central America. Gary was dead. And I don't, have you seen the movie on Gary Webb? I recommend you see that, because you will see this entire process followed letter by letter, because it's a perfected system. These three guys, I know them, I know them all, um, good guys, every single one of them. William Benny, I'd recommend you go to uh, listen to some of his talks about what the NSA is doing today. He was a high-level NSA senior manager at the top of the ranks, and he came out and blew the whistle on the NSA domestic surveillance program and Trailblazer, which had lost $7 million at that point. Um, he was taking a shower one night. The shower curtain flew open. There's an FBI SWAT team in his house, and he's got a gun at his head. They raided his entire house. Then there is uh, Thomas Drake. Thomas Drake was an NSA whistleblower. He went through the system. He reported it to his managers that this was a problem. This, was, this is surveilling American citizens. It lost $7 million. Something needs to be done about it. He went through his supervisors and went through the system. 
His house was raided by the FBI. He was arrested and charged with espionage. Uh, they fought it in court, and it was, it was uh, uh, winnowed down to a misdemeanor charge, and, and Thomas Drake is out. But Thomas Drake has, has lost his career now, completely. This was the case that Edward Snowden cited when he said, this is why I didn't go through the system. This is why I left the U.S. and reported it to the British newspaper, because I saw this Snowden saying this, I saw them do this to Thomas Drake, and I knew what they were going to do. And you know what? Edward Snowden's right. That's, ex that's exactly what they would have done, or worse. Kirk Wiebe, another friend of mine, exposed the NSA surveillance along with uh, Bill Binney. His house was raided by, the FBI, by an FBI SWAT team. Did nothing wrong, committed no crime whatsoever. Nothing. And they raided his house. John Karakow, spoke with him recently, another friend, a hero, exposed the CIA torture program. And they were just waiting for him, because he was going on camera in the news media and talking about the fact that the CIA was torturing people. So they were just waiting. This is why I have to be careful with everything I say. They were just waiting for him to make one mistake. And he gave a card, a business card to somebody. Turns out the name on that business card was a person who was uh, a, a covert agent at some time in the past. And they nailed him, arrested him, sentenced him to 30 months in jail, and he spent two years in prison. He got out a year ago. You'll see, John, you got, go out on the net and watch any of these guys' uh, interviews. I'd encourage you to do it. Uh, these guys are heroes. Uh, and they're, each one of them is one of a kind. And they're some of America's best, in my opinion. Uh, this is the first time tonight, as, as I'm wrapping up, that I have ever told this part of the story, either in the book uh, that I wrote in print or, or in an interview. Uh, because I, I want uh, people to understand that there's a personal side to these things. Uh, when you're going through this kind of uh, tyranny, um, no, you're not a superman or super person or super woman. Uh, I mean, they put you through a torturous set of circumstances and events. They're trying to destroy you and your family. Uh, they, they raised the interest rates on my loans. They blocked my retirement funds, forced our house into foreclosure because we had no money to pay the mortgage. That'll get you. They blocked my employment with any contractors related to the CIA. I had friends, supervisors, uh, that knew of my awards and medals, and they were ordered not to hire me and they, when they were trying to get me into work for them. They blackballed my employment with these guys trying to destroy me financially. This would happen to me personally. I continued to stand by faith, frankly. Uh, we had huge legal expenses, extensive medical bills from the family's illnesses, um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in medical bills. We lost everything we owned. All of our material possessions were in the house that was contaminated, and it was all destroyed, taken away, and burned. And we, we literally came back to Washington with nothing but the shirt on our back. Uh, I went to several meetings. I had a 15-page detailed report with evidence, doctor's diagnosis, environmental studies, the whole shebang that was lost several times. And then they found it one day from, from the lithosphere and brought me in for an interrogation. Now, interrogating a former interrogator, that's always interesting. And spent uh, several hours trying to get me to recant the evidence that I had in my memo or else. And uh, I refused. At that point, you know, I'd pretty much... I was kind of like the lamb at a gyro feast. You're committed, <laughs> you know? I mean, I, I, I wasn't, wasn't going to stop. So I said respectfully, uh, no, no, that's evidence uh, in this case, and uh, uh, you're going to keep it in there. So I was taken to uh, a meeting with my attorney inside the Office of General Counsel where I demanded to see this grievance that I had written in the evidence, and they claimed, uh, well, we don't have it. What do you mean you don't have it? We lost it, they said. Uh, my Two attorneys had never seen the beast before. They're, they're sitting there with their eyes all wide. And I said, you, you go get that or I'm coming in your office and I'm going to find it for you. So they come back in and they present me a one-page uh, document written, handwritten in blue ink claiming to be my grievance, which is a 15-page typed document that I had written. And at that point, I said, it's over. We're leaving. Went back to my office. I was met with three CI officers who tried, tried to get me to sign a statement saying I'd engaged in insubordination. And I respectfully refused and said... Uh, uh, this, this battle is just beginning, you guys. Um, like the FBI said, you messed with, with the wrong person. I took them to court after that. Uh, there was another house break-in, and it just kept going. Um, then they issued the threat of, well, we've got you mis misusing a government credit card for paying for the decontamination of the stuff that we poisoned and contaminated. And I said, nice try, but, you know, make my day. I'd lost my career. I lost all of my retirement completely. My job outside was blocked at this phase, because I hadn't stopped. I hadn't given up yet. I was, I was going. I was still going. All the evidence was sealed, so no one could see it, not even my congressman. 
I was threatened with prison if I talked about my case or the poisonings to anyone under the state secrets privilege, I was going to jail. My wife will tell you for several years, we waited for that event every single night, not knowing if it was going to happen or not. I was, I was ready. I was ready to go, ready and willing. Um, I mean, this is the Constitution we're talking about. This is my country. This is my democracy we're talking about. I don't care what you do. You're not getting away with this. Lost my family. My wife could not recover. She was very sick neurologically. She couldn't get out of bed. She was bleeding through her gums, bruising all over. Uh, could you imagine being the wife and having a, a powerful agency like this break into your house, uh, poison your children, paint chemicals on the ceiling, and then tell you you're going to prison if you talk about it to anyone? Ruined our marriage. I mean, bless her heart. No woman should have to go through that. Uh, uh, but that happened. Couldn't take it anymore. My children were having nightmares for years after this. Nice people, aren't they? at these levels. No, they're, they're wicked. Uh, I had coworkers cheering me on. Oh man, everybody in there hates them. <laughs> I mean, we call it the paranoia palace. They're telling me, man, go get him, Kevin. We're with you, we're with you. But when I came out and stood, crickets, they all disappeared back in the woodwork to the land of the cowardly. And I understood, okay, I, I understand, you know. Uh, doing this sort of thing is rare. Um, I wrote my book, they blacked out everything relating to the illnesses and the poisonings, but they left the vulnerability to our agents and the other stuff that I never thought I'd get through, they, they left, left it in there. I think they, they wanted, they were making kind of a deal, we'll let you publish this stuff, but don't ever talk about this, ever. And we, we still kind of have this, I, I have a lot of uh, programs I worked on and uh, in a lot of different parts of the shadow government, and I, I'm not talking about that, I'm an honorable man, there's no reason for me ever to talk about it in my lifespan. But we have kind of an agreement going. <laughs> I'll get up and talk about this stuff, and we'll just leave that other stuff aside. And we've got kind of a mutual agreement here. Just, you know, don't go there. Um, blacked out those parts in the book, and uh, they thought they had finished me off. The only thing that kept me going, frankly, was my faith and my belief in freedom, that this, com this country should be a free country, and there should no agency, no shadow government should have this kind of power in a constitutional government. I can't tell, that's what drove me, is, is the outrage and the tyranny of this. It just, it's got to be stopped. So, uh, they were wrong. They hadn't finished me off. Uh, I answered to a high authority, and that, that's always the worst nightmare, I think. I wound up in Jacksonville, Florida, with absolutely nothing, everything. Everything I'd loved had been take, taken away from me. Uh, book had been blacked out, the first one, completely blacked out. I sat down in Jacksonville just, just, uh, just with nothing left. Um, then I met an angel. Uh, I, uh, I met a woman named Sue who uh, helped me through a lot of this. Um, when I was outraged by what had been done, uh, she listened to my stories. Uh, gave me a, a, an ear about the betrayal that I had just suffered. Um, when uh, people were parked outside our house, she was there standing strong uh, with me. When I had third parties logging onto my computer, when I was writing the book, she stood by me then. Uh, when I wrote From the Company of Shadows and built the code into the book about what they had done and what they'd covered up, there's a code in there that unlocks the blackouts. She stood with me there. Uh, days I drank too much, she was there patiently with me, just helping me through it. Uh, days when we thought for four years that I was going to be arrested any night, she stayed with me through the whole time. And uh, that's my wife Sue in the back. So uh, there are angels out there. Thank God for them, if you just don't give up. Uh, this is a segment from the book from the Company of Shadows. Now what I did was I built codes all through the book, and they missed them all. This is one of them. This is a picture. This is what the book Blackouts, Identities, and Case Facts are Hidden in Secret. That's the actual text. There is nothing classified here. It, it, is, it is a term, a family term. Let's just put it that way. There's nothing classified at all. Blackouts, Identities, and Case Facts are Hidden in Secret. They don't want anybody to know that the shadow government does and has hurt families. Because that's basically all they're saying there is families. I won't say the exact words, but to the effect of families. Uh, this is the actual shadow of the young 17-year-old man that was poisoned so bad, the doctor said it looked like he'd been exposed to a burst of radiation. And the agency blacked that out in the book, that doctor's diagnosis. This is his actual shadow. And as you can tell, all these themes blend into the, into the, the uh, uh, title of the book. The title usually comes after the book is written, and that's how, that's how this happened. That's the actual shadow. 
So I built a code into the, in front, from the Company of Shadows. I decided, not my constitution, you don't. Uh, go ahead, make my day. We'll just take this all the way and see how far you're going to go with this. <laughs> so I built a code into the book that reveals who this person is and reveals how they were poisoned, who was poisoned, and how it was done. And it's a numerical code that's woven through the text. Uh, it's in the back of the book. They know I did it. It's gone to the, I, there was a press release. It went to the desk of the director. They know full well that I put a code in that book. They also know that what they blacked out was illegal. So we have kind of a mutual agreement here. And I put it in front of the Company of Shadows. This is one of the chapters about the, the poisonings and the doctor's diagnosis and the report. Um, issued a report. Uh, they blacked out what the report was by an outside, the guy that was shot. Uh, they blacked out that. They blacked out his report. They blacked out the results of his report of the, the toxic exposure. But that's one of the actual chapters in the book. This, it, these are accounts of the break into our house, the chemicals that were painted on the ceiling, the fact that we were followed and, and the guards attested to that fact, the doctor's diagnosis and evidence records. That's what this is. Blacked out. Nothing classified. Nothing is a source and method. Everything reveals illegal activity and a gross cover-up. All of it. It's a dirty job, as they say. Somebody's got to do it. So, in closing, there's got to be CIA reform. It is a must. As I, humbly as I know it, I may be the first CIA officer. They call you a CIA agent, but that's a, a misnomer. You're, you're a CIA officer. You're kind of an officer similar to the military grade. You're a CIA officer. If you're a CIA agent, you're, you, you've been recruited by the CIA to spy against your government. So CIA agent is a misnomer. CIA officer is someone who's reached those ranks. Anyway, um, the intelligence analysis is necessary. Truman's original goal of an, of an intelligence analysis outfit that provides objective intelligence to the president to make decisions is a good thing. That was, the, that was Truman's original intent. Yes, we need something like that. Something like that should be uh, developed again. The National Security Act of 1947 needs to be rescinded. That gives the CIA the power to conduct undefined covert operations needs to be rescinded. That power needs to be taken away from the CIA now. There's been too many gross violations, too much abuse of secrecy, too much control of the US government for this to continue any longer. And I think the, and this, this is starting, the public is starting to demand that the CIA be dismantled, the National Security Act be rescinded, and, and an actual intelligence agency be recreated in, in uh, the form that it was originally intended. Dissolve all CIA covert action. Every single one, the majority ones, have been an abject failure and backfired and caused national security to be hurt worse than if that operation would, has never done, been done before. That's what corruption and secrecy will do. It will backfire every time, and it will wind up coming back and hurting national security, not helping it. Restructure the U.S. intelligence apparatus and take away its power of secrecy. Restructure it so that it has congressional approval and that monster is put back underneath the Constitution. If we want to survive as a constitutional republic, if we want to survive, that's got to happen. If it doesn't happen, it's over for us. Full disclosure to the American people of what this is doing. Full disclosure of the tax revenue budget because it's coming out of our pockets. If you're going to use tax money, at least through our congressman that we've elected, we need to know where that tax money is going. And we need to know exactly, shadow government, what you're spending this money on because it's the American people's money and it's our tax dollars and we demand that you tell us what you're spending it on. No more secret budgets. No more corruption with our tax dollars. An impartial committee to monitor the use of government secrecy. We need a government secrecy oversight committee staffed by people, elect, staffed by officials elected by the American people. No more abuse of government secrecy. It is the new tyrannical power. It's the new tyranny of our age is secrecy. And there needs to be a council appointed by the people that oversees the, the use or abuse of government secrecy, puts that back under the Constitution. Remember that the shadow government hates the light. Just like cockroaches, the shadow government hates exposure. That's why we got this Donald Trump thunderstorm thing going on. The shadow government, like a cockroach, hates light. What does it say? Uh, sunlight is the best antiseptic. Shadow government hates being exposed. It'll do anything to stop it, and I mean anything. In my case, they almost did anything to stop it. 
There needs to be a grassroots civil movement across the America. We need to establish thousands of groups united around the Constitution. Constitution groups that are both Democratic and Republican coming together under the Constitution and stopping this monster. If you love your country, you're a Democrat or Republican or Independent, you need to come together under the Constitution and stop this because your country is going and it's going fast. That's what's at stake. We need to cause a social media storm. We need to get impartial uh, news and information groups out there with credible journalists that are publishing this stuff over the internet to the American people and beyond with credible, accurate information that's going around the bought and paid for news media so that people are informed, cause a social media storm. We have that, at least for now. Get this out there, educate people as, as to what's going on. And when people get, it takes one person to lead a movement, and then other people, one, two, three, four, five people, then other people will follow. Somebody's just got to take the first step. Um, and then you get out on the social media, you start accurately, incredibly putting this stuff out, you cause a social media storm. Fire them all. Congressmen and senators who are now statesmen, and are no longer following the Constitution, who are lying to us, spending our money on things we have not authorized them to do, and are not fulfilling their constitutional responsibility, the Congress and the Senate fire them all and elect new people, congressmen and senators, that are constitutionalists at every level, federal and state, but specifically federal. It's time uh, to do some house cleaning. It's past time. Demand total intelligence agency reform. Demand it and do not let that go. Demand it. We the people are still here, at least physically. So demand it. We have to demand it. We have to push it. We must never forget. This is government by the people. Remember that thing called the Constitution? This is government by the people. It's not the other way around. Although they forced it into being that way, it's not the other way around. The Congress and Senate are your representatives. They work for you. They serve you. Now, that's not what they're doing, but constitutionally, that's what they're supposed to do under the law, under constitutional law. Constitutional government serves the people. We don't serve the government. It's not our master. The government is our master. That's the, the founding fathers were brilliant. They were studies of history. They knew that's the only way it was going to work. It was a brilliant, brilliant piece of work, but they, they, they did a lot of study of history and past governments before they wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. There's a lot of study went behind that. Government violation of the Constitution are what? Felonies. Okay? Our government, the shadow government, has committed multiple felonies. Have to remember that. They've broken the law at the highest levels. They're doing this uh, secretly using our tax dollars. They're picking this money out of our back pocket to do these things without our knowledge. And the weapon of tyranny is always fear from communism to fascism all the way down to the tyranny of secrecy. The weapon of the shadow government is fear. They want us to fear them. They want us to fear what they can do to us if we talk about them. They want us to fear um, what they can do to us if we try to stand up and expose what they're doing. They want us to just leave them alone, be afraid of them. You talk to anybody on the street, I really don't want to know what the CIA is doing. You know, just let them do what they want to do. I, I just don't want to go there. Exactly. The weapon of tyranny is fear. All down through history, that's always been the case. So do not fear the shadow government. Once you fear, whatever that entity is, controls you. If you don't fear, you're free. Uh, I, I always like to wrap my uh, talks up with this famous quote attributed to Thomas Jefferson because it's so true. When people fear their government, there is tyranny. But the reverse is true. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. They need to fear us. They need to see us getting up at times like this and saying, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. We, the people, are not going to put up with this. And guess what? Now we have the guts and we have the courage to stand up against you because we don't fear you anymore. Then they got a problem. All the way down through history, movements have started just like this when people stop fearing tyranny in their government. So that, that's all I have for tonight. Thanks for being patient. Please remember this. Uh, this is going to be uh, in two parts available on for the love of freedom .net, I think is the website that we're putting up. Uh, take this message, please, and, and, and just spread it around and stand. Stand up with me and the rest of us that are doing this humbly before the Constitution. Stand up and together as the American people, we can do it. So anyway, thank, thanks you all. Thanks for coming.